Ah. Hello and welcome to this streaming session on the Goodman Games uh, official Twitch channel. And I'm Robin. I'm going to be running through today a variety of um, different tactics and approaches to writing an adventure that I'm in the middle of. And I shall just get straight on with it and talk about what I'm going to do as I work through the process. So switching back to this main view, I have here in front of me the adventure that I've been writing. And um, if I can shoot it up to the top of the page here, I'll be able to show you the details as I work through the adventure. So yeah, it's called Beneath the Valley of the Ultra Knolls. Uh, this is about episode 12 now as I'm working through this. And essentially what I'm doing is uh, running through step by step on the uh, adventure creation, working through all the different rooms. And while I'm doing that, I use a couple of different books to do that. One of them is this um, book by Goodman Games called The Dungeon Alphabet. And that's written by Michael Curtis, amongst others. And it includes a variety of different, um, here it is a bit close up, a variety of different ways to create your uh, dungeon and fill it with uh, creatures and rooms. Uh, essentially it's a lot of tables, uh, really nicely written as well, so that you can uh, come up with ideas to make that uh, room as you do that. And then essentially uh, also use this one, which is the monster alphabet, which is another one which you can uh, shoot through, find different tables, and then uh, work out what's going on. Uh, the other thing which I'm probably going to do, which I tried uh, last week but I had some technical issues, is use this magical glove, uh, which is basically part of this uh, pen tablet setup so that I can do some drawings on the maps while I'm working through. And, uh, and hopefully that will work, but this uh, weird looking glove uh, stops your hand from rubbing on the screen when you're uh, drawing and scribbling on there, so that's uh, one thing I do. And um, yeah, so the dungeons themselves as well, I can talk about uh, the dungeons themselves. So if I switch back to the main screen here on the Raspberry Pi. Oh, that's something I always mention every week, which I've got to do really, which is the, uh, in terms of the uh, setup here, which I'm using, I have a Raspberry Pi, which is one of these small single board computers, SBC, if you ever hear anybody say SBC. And I run a, a version of Linux on it called Raspbian. And that's what you can see exactly here. This is a desktop running um, Raspbian, which is hence it's got a funny little raspberry uh, in the corner or raspberry, but they're called raspberries. And um, basically it allows me to run the Google Docs applications on here, which is uh, quite a nice way to be able to do the uh, documentation for the adventure as I work on. So, Anybody that is watching, please uh, do feel free to throw in the occasional uh, note in the comments because if I see anything in there, I'll respond. Um, don't be don't be shy, basically, because if you put something in there, I'll I will uh, I'll call you out viciously in one way or another. Aha, Samuel, uh, yes, managed to catch you on live. Hi, Samuel, thanks for signing in. So. Yeah, well, hopefully this one not as bad as last week's because I, I just went terribly wrong trying to um, handle doing drawing and everything at the same time because of technology failures. So where am I? I'm going to dive straight in. So as I uh, work through the map, the first map is this main one which I hand sketched out um, live a few weeks ago. Thank you, Jack. Um, that's appreciated. <laughs> Any comments, a good comment, by the way. So that's good. Thank you. But you can see here, I was drawing out the main adventure map for this place, which I just called Scarp Sea. And in the middle is this uh, kind of temple thing called the Oblix, which you can see there. And basically, the main adventure is driven through this, which is like a multi-layered dungeon. But you, you start from the top, as with all dungeons. This one happens to have a weird hole in the top of this big obsidian block, which I've called the Oblix. And then you uh, climb on down through there. And there's a, there's a pre-adventure as they work towards there for, for Dungeon Crawl Classics, where you start out in this barrow first here. So, you know, it's, um, it's that classic sort of Dungeon Crawl Classics DCC approach to getting them straight, stuck straight in. So there's like a barrow adventure in here with like a single dungeon. And then down into the Oblix with the multiple floors in there. 
So if I go down to the bit that I'm working on at the moment, which I'm going to try and draw out, I can talk through what I'm going to draw, uh, attempt to draw, and then how that's going to work. So, so there it is. So first off, this is the barrow. So does it show here the barrow first scene? Yeah, outside the barrow, approaching the door. So in the moonlight, in the moonlight, the party can see the large burial mounds, which are surrounded by several patches of barren-looking trees. As they approach the largest of the mounds, which is the residence of the ancestors of the Roxmas family, um, you see some shapes moving swiftly from tree to tree and creeping from behind the dark black standing stones that surround the tomb's entranceway. So that's the adventure intro uh, for this particular scene. And then I've got my stat blocks. The first things in here which I've created are things called grave warmers, which I've just called the huggers. Maybe that's what they're locally known as. Uh, lean, fast-running undead and they have a claw attack. It only does a 1d3, it's kind of basic, um, and seven hit dice each. Now, I'll tell you what I haven't done is I haven't listed how many there are. I think I should have said five there. Uh, but they have an interesting uh, feature about them, which is they have a special ability, which if they run up to a player, they can uh, sort of whack the ground with their feet when they're near a... Um, near any kind of grave sites or anything of similar like that. And basically the, the ground opens up and they fall through into what could be a, a, an old grave. Um, and that's why they're called huggers, because they take you down there and they try to sap the strength from you inside the grave. So they're not particularly like really powerful uh, killers, but they have an interesting uh, thing going on there. Yes, Kim, uh, DCC, it's called Dungeon uh, Crawl Classics. It's... Uh, I've got the cover actually, uh, just here, which is um, Dungeon Crawl Classics with all the green disappearing because I've got a green screen beside me. Uh, but yeah, it's a big old fat tome of a rule book. You've got everything you need in there. It's got the monsters, um, spells, the whole lot. So it's like a player's book, uh, Dungeon Master's Guide and Monster Manual all in one, which is hence the size. It's been around for about, uh, what's it been around? Since 2012? So... It's, it's had eight editions because they just reprint every year with a new cover, um, potentially a hardback version. And um, yeah, it's kind of old school style, um, kind of chaos and lore rather than the usual span of um, uh, alignments that you get in these adventures. So it's sort of like focused in on that whole Michael Moorcock 1970s style um, of adventure gaming. So, yeah, that's what I'm using here. Oh, Samuel, yeah, DCC is uh, definitely worth uh, worth investing in, even just for ideas. And the adventures are, are great, too, that they write. They tend to be really short, concise, and get straight into the action. So there's no messing around. There's no ne there's not necessarily that scene in the inn where you all get together and, and wait for some rumours to appear. It's, it's much more... It's like the, the heavy rock hit slash heavy metal of role-playing in that you would just get straight into it, really. Uh, yeah, so that's where I was with this, these grave warmers. And if I just go down, I can show you the map. Uh, so the grave warmer encounter would be outside of the Barrow Mound, and this is the main entrance to it. And what I've done in the last few weeks uh, when I've been on here is I've detailed out that um, basically the uh, map itself is one that I've used this one page uh, dungeon to generate. Um, Seem to have a bug in it at the moment that it, it's doing it upside down. But basically, um, the website is wataboo.itch.io. You know, if you pause this in the future, you'll be able to sort of play that back. But it, it makes a, a dungeon map like these for you randomly. And what I tend to do is just go in there and then I keep sort of refreshing until it gets a map sort of similar to the one that I want. So they always look sort of slightly different, even though for some reason it's upside down on my screen at the moment. It must be uh, um, I've got some sort of bug or something on there. But anyway, that's a massive dungeon that's created. It doesn't populate it for you, so you have to like create the stuff in there. Plus the other thing is it tends to leave gaps in the numbers, so I have to edit those numbers in because it might have, uh, like that room seven I've put there, it didn't actually have a number on it. So I had to put that on, which is why my number sequence is a bit wrong. Um, Yes, Sam. Uh, Samuel, yes, there was an ice cream van. <laughs> I, got, uh, I got an interesting comment, actually, because I've been talking to my neighbours about the ice cream van situation here um, uh, in my location, because 
we have like a close behind us and then a couple of like um, cul-de-sacs and things around the, the back as well. And it tends to be that the ice cream vans circulate around and we've had situations where I think we've had three arrive at once in different locations. So yeah, so interesting uh, musical accompaniment to the stream. So yes, what I want to do is improve this because in this room seven, which should be really be called room one, it's the entrance hall. I had uh, some details on there. Cairn of skulls are piled high in the chamber on the side um, and they obscure the wall. And there's also plate sized uh, lily pads on this um, water feature piece there. And I wanted to give these maps a little bit more of the Dungeon Crawl Classics flavor. So if anybody knows Dungeon Crawl Classics, um, Oh, on Steam, there's a program to generate dungeon maps, so that's handy. Thanks, Jack. I need to look into some more, actually. I was looking at another one uh, this week, actually. I can tell you what it's called, because I think I put it in my RPG thing there. It's called Incarnate. So if I open that in a new tab and look at that, this doesn't generate them for you, but um, you can download it. Uh, there's a, a, a PC and a Mac version you can download and it can create this style of map. So it's really quite um, detailed, as you can see, it looks almost like publisher standard. And they've been gaining ground in terms of um, people are using this quite a lot. And it's it works on a, a license this. I think you pay $30 a year, although I just, I just don't like... Um, a wonder draft. I've not seen that one, but that's, I'll take a note of that one too, Sam. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the um, it seems to be doing quite well. And I contacted them this week because I was interested because I thought if I use this, obviously it's got artwork that they've uploaded into the app. Um, so I asked them, what can I do if I wanted to use it in my books and things? And they said, that's fine. As long as um, uh, you've got the pro version of the license, you can use the artwork in there, as long as you're not dumping in artwork from other people that, um, you know, publish portraits or something of characters that don't belong to you. But if you use the art and the components inside it, um, like this, you could publish that in your, own, in your own book if you're doing a PDF adventure or something like I'm writing here. A Wonder Draft is not subscription-based and lifetime purchase, so that sounds good, might be worth having a look at. Um, I certainly really liked using Incarnate. Um, it might be worth me showing that at some point. And uh, much more comprehensive. I mean, look at this. This is like your Dyson style uh, hatching and layout, um, which I've got here for the uh, entrance hall, which tends to be um, uh, kind of basic and simple. But I like it. But uh, I say, with the Dungeon Hall Classics Adventures, you find people do very artistic um, maps in those with you know, monsters looming in from the side and you might get a big face or, you know, if there was a coffin here, they draw on lots of skeletons and things around the side of it. So, yeah, so that's what I'm going to try and do. So based on, I'm going to try and do room seven first, then I might do something in one. Um, but room seven, I've changed now to be one in my um, external image of this, which I'm working on, because I want to change all these to be appropriate. So you go in the entrance or you don't walk into room seven, you walk into room one. And then this would be two, and then you sort of work your way around. So I've sketched that on. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Just need to check uh, the Twitch. So second, uh, Dr. Vesuvius, uh, second recommendation for Wonder Draft. Yeah, so it's a tool of my choice for overlaid maps. Now, Wonder Draft is, I've heard someone say it, but I've never seen it or used it. So, you know, I will look into Wonder Draft. Um, it's worth a look. So, yes. So it just reminds me I could probably bring up this screen a little bit easier so I can see the Twitch chat going on at the same time. Right. If I just have a look down here, I shall now switch over them based on, let's read what's in room seven though, just so that I can get everything correct uh, for that. So I've got uh, the grey lily pad, which I've already started to draw on, and I've got a pile of skeletons uh, here. And then in room one, so the next one, so that's probably the one I'll move on to next. So this is the lilac spike lily, which I created using the Dungeon Crawl Classic stats. Uh, it's got a flower spike. It's like a lily pad with a strange kind of half-human uh, pod-like um, 
plant form underneath it that attacks with a, a spike, a, a flowery spike thing, and has sharp leaves if you walk through the lily pads as well. So that's there in the watery feature. And in the main burial chamber, it's a large crypt lined with memorials to the Rocksmith family, and the floor is covered in inscriptions and scribed ancient spells, and a range of winged dragon forms are a feature of the floor. All right, so I've got to try and draw a winged dragon. That's going to be terrible. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then toward the east of the chamber is a large memorial stone covered in glowing blue glyphs. There are very small objects, including a shield mounted on the memorial stone. And that's because I rolled up that this memorial stone was kind of somehow strangely magnetic. Uh, so it will draw uh, weapons and things towards it. And what's stuck on there at the moment are things that have been left behind. Um, and it's made of the same black obsidian as the oblex, which is the main, um, uh, the main uh, feature in the center of this uh, dungeon area here. So it sort of ties the... Um, the barrows above Cliff's End there to the Oblix itself. Um, yeah, so right here we go. I'm going to attempt this now by switching the tablet on and then um, working my way through this to clear a couple of things out of the way. Not make too much noise. Right, so let's see what we can get on with here then. Find the pen. Right. So this, there could be two ways that I'm doing this. Because I'm showing you this um, directly in the application, I could also um, throw up like the desktop view here and you could see me doing the, the drawing as well. But it's a bit easier probably just to get a clarity on the actual uh, tablet itself happening there because you can see everything in detail. Uh, so yes, so as we can see just here, I have the, um, I'll zoom in, we have that room one I've called it now with the lilac spike lily and I attempted to kind of sketch out some weird lily pads on there. Uh, additionally I've changed the numbers as I said so you've got here like room one and then room two to here and this is the one with this uh, oblix thing in and then I tried to do a pile of skulls but I say that's my primitive uh, drawing skills. Um, didn't do that fantastic with the pile of skulls, but I want to try and improve that a little bit. So I'm going to uh, have a go at trying to improve that by doing some sketching over there. So basically, you know, it's really just a case of how do you do a pile of skulls sensibly, and that's what I'm going to try and uh, sketch out now. And uh, I mean, the hardest thing really for me is trying to do it so that the um, the sketch looks kind of cartoony without it looking too um, too cartoony, um, so kind of gothic-y looking. But let's see how I get on. I will zoom straight into that piece there and um, and just see how it goes. Yeah. So what I was doing was trying to. I think I've got the right pen size. Trying to um, sketch these out in a way that looked somewhat worth um, cartoony, but also not too cartoony as to be a poor drawing. I just need to get my references up. Unfortunately, not able to do that at the moment. Here it is. Blocking my view. Right, skulls. Yes, if I continue and just sort of make a pile, I'll see how I get on with that. So let's just check how thick this works out. Also trying to see that I might, don't, you don't look constantly at the back of my head. I may have to work on that feature too. So first of all, obviously doing the shape is somewhat difficult. Um, I'm instantly not happy with that at all. Uh, so I'll get rid of that. Actually, what I think I might do is just draw it in the top part with a new layer and then I can move it down afterwards as an extra skull. So I'm going to do new layer first of all. So I've got a new layer and then I'm going to draw above here just to be able to sort of move it down afterwards and see how that works out. So I might do something with a very sort of round squat head then to start with. I'll tell you what I should really be doing as well is uh, 
as I'm learning my way through here live with you, realizing I shouldn't really be drawing it sideways. I should draw it perfectly straight on and then fit it into the shape afterwards, therefore allowing myself to be a little less uh, trying to draw it sideways on. So here we go. And then maybe make this quite big. Oh, the other thing, size-wise, I can always shrink it down afterwards to uh, make it fit the bill, so to speak. And the tough, interesting thing with skulls is this sort of jawline that comes out here. You can always fix it afterwards, of course. Yeah, that's not too bad, really. As a quick, as a quick go. Um, let's see if I can uh, just sort of accent a few things here. I could really do with making the pen size smaller for the details, but I'll go with it as chunky. Oh, thanks, Samuel. There is a hidden entrance here too. Yeah, between these two here. So I was um, in debate whether I should put like a, a secret thing on there or leave it as is, I don't know. So also the other thing with sketching this out, which I found when I was doing these skulls the other day, I was just sort of having a mini practice, is that I then thickened the, thickened the black lines a bit and it kind of ups the cartooniness plus sort of gives it a bit of character too. Uh, once I've got the basic shape in, so you know, build it up rather than uh, so that's so this side here looks like it's come out a bit too rounded. So well, it's not doing too bad. Part of the uh, things I'm learning here in terms of technique is the fact that switching back before between the um, eraser and the and the pen color it takes a little bit of a knack really. So again, I'm not looking for perfection. It's more like, can I get this done to make a pile of skulls up um, and not, not be too worried about it. So what I could do is add some little cracks and things. Um, and then use the uh, eraser again to sort of come in and it up a little bit so yeah take a breather that's not too bad that's a that's a reasonable first start so um, really what I would do now is select it hopefully I'm on the right layer and then press I think it's control no it's not control is it alt no. shift oh, that's interesting really I'm looking for rotate That's just pulling up the selection. Oh, I got it. I know what to do. I know what to do. So education here in this. We're using an application called Pixelmator. Um, so you have to move first to the arrow, and then when you come over here, I believe it will give you the rotate. So really, I want to auto rotate it. Let me like increase and decrease the size, but I'm not getting the um, rotation of it. That's it. Ah, so basically, swing it round a little bit, shrink it down a wee bit as well. So 
So because this is top down and I'm not being too artistic with it, really it's just a case of sort of piling them in. Um, but that's okay for me. Now I'm going to do one more skull because just to add to the pile in this corner over here that's left out. And I may also do that secret uh, link between the two areas there and put like an S in that too, just to make it look like it's, although it's already got the kind of view that there isn't a link there. Let's go for another another skull then. So I'm going to do it on another layer just because oh, I didn't know that one. it's relatively easy to do that. Back to the drawing pencil. And um, yeah, I'm going to do the skull this time again with maybe the... Um, bottom half part of the jaw still on there as well so let's see how it comes out random chance again really here well, this one's worked out really big but I'll give it a weird squat a weird squat head maybe This time just keep going down and then over and just sort of draw the whole mouth right over. Very simple technique for a skull that. And then, no that's no good is it, no it's just. So, and then actually this is where that thickening of the line again by just going over now that I've got like the basic shape in there kind of helps bring it in a little bit. It also means I can leave some of the detailed lines like skinny style and they look kind of okay as it thickens the whole thing up. Well, it's a basic job, isn't it? But that's another another one done. This time I know a bit more about how to select and rotate, so that's going to be, I've already learnt live learning while ago. Um, I'm using the command key, like the Windows key essentially, to, to do that. So, where should I put that? So there we go. I mean, the only other thing is really, should I put some more sort of bits of rib cage and things on there? I'm not sure where I should go with that. Make it a pirate skull with one eye. Yeah, I guess I could do. The other thing is I could put a crack in an eye, couldn't I? I mean, why not? I mean, let's let's stretch it back out and I'll shift it up here. And um, if I deselect it again, see about... Um, Put like a much bigger sort of crack in it. Um, now I've selected the wrong layer now. That's the right layer. Okay, so go back to the pen. I was thinking I could I could make this a much more uneven looking thing, like with a large crack or something, because they're all looking a bit samey there. Yeah, that's that's looking that's feeling like a little bit more interesting, like the whole skull's maybe caved in. 
why not do a little bit around here as well, cutting into a break in the jaw too. the funny little bits off the edge. I mean, why have all of these looking sort of totally perfect when they could be sort of smashed up bits? One thing I had thought about the piles, uh, piling them up, was to have some sort of way to link them together a little bit. Um, you know, almost like there's sort of a black darkness between them. Uh, and a skull, victim of Hannibal Lex, a skull with a, an arrow buried in his head would be funny. Yeah, that, that might sort of show, although there's not really a reason because they're like ceremonially left here, but there's no reason not to put uh, some sort of... Um, weapons or something on them looking like they've uh, been attacked. So yeah, so the other one's now beginning to look quite large on there, I might shrink it down a little bit as well. Yes. Well, that's an attempt. It looks like a pile of skulls, and I mean, really, if you if we're going to zoom out from there, all it is is a tiny sort of pile of skulls in the corner. They could uh, potentially be a little bit bolder, but that's a, a first effort. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and do um, just sort of representation of that secret door on there, just with an S, and um, layer that over. So if I go back to the sort of background layer there, I can now, now just get a larger eraser. Then let's see. Oh, that's probably not big enough. I mean, it's going to look a bit sketchy, but that's kind of what I'm sort of looking for anyway. With this, it's nothing to. Then, and again, because I say I am going for that sketchy look, I'm just going to do like an S in there, and it'll probably look really bad. But let's just uh, see, you probably need to go a bit bolder than that. Too bold, yeah. Small S should have kept going there, lost my flow. The secret that will do the job in there, so again. Just makes it easy for the games master or judge, doesn't it, when you're playing with this, to um, you know look in there and see that there is a secret between those two locations. So in room two there, which is like the main memorial room, I do now need to think about something for that. And uh, let's get let's move it over there so I can. I'll zoom out a bit so. So, well, the memorial rock thing in the middle is going to be reasonably big. So, again, I'm going to try and draw it up here, and then I'm going to sort of pull it down afterwards. I thought maybe I'd give it a potentially a slightly, um, a slight sort of feel of something that has some three D ness on it. And I'm going to start with the the the, um, the narrow brush, and then build up. So. Uh, memorial stone wise the perspective is probably going to be sort of all over the place but let me see how this sort of works out quite a narrow top um, the other thing in here is I said it had sort of dragon style um, 
flooring with inscriptions on it. And there goes my um, So realistically here, there's some sort of way that there's glyphs and things on here. So if I draw on, again, just sort of start, start sort of sketchy with it and then build up sort of panels with uh, glyphs and things in position here. try and keep some semblance of the perspective even though it is going to be um, very sketchy looking. And the other thing I need to do is draw like this, there's a shield and there's a weapon and a mace that are attached to this because it's magnetic um, and sort of humming with magical runes. So let's zoom into that so that I can work on it really close up and see if I'm doing my best job on it. which is just get stuck in and then see what happens. Could the glyphs depict the life of the Rocksmith family? Well actually they are already depicting something that um, I could uh, flip up actually on here which is um, in here so the large memorial stone is magnetic. Um, the glyphs require a wizard to make a check to read them um, and then I've said on the lower surface of the memorial stone is a carved image of the oblix. Uh, usually, unusually, the oblix is featured within that, within what looks like a large rolling dune landscape. It has a larger structure with stairs leading up to the surface. So, I was going to just sort of draw the oblix in, in there really, um, which is going to be interesting in itself. But if I draw it, sort of like it was like a, a direct on side view of the oblix, which is the the large structure at the centre of this and try and make it look like it's been pictorial carved in. No small feat really, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try that as a kind of a worship item. And then it's got dunes, I said, in the, in the background, so if I kind of uh, draw some sort of carved in dunes. Again, it's got to sort of look sort of pictorial style, hasn't it? Now, I said there was some sort of structure on the side of it, so I can sort of draw something coming down here, maybe that's structurally. Again. It's carved in it's not going to have a great deal of detail in there but yeah so somehow showing the main structure from the adventure carved on here is a kind of a hint that it's been uh, it's been somewhere else before it's uh, been here okay it's going to look so small when it's uh, zoomed in down here but let's uh, let me keep sort of working on it as a structure and uh, 
that back in with the eraser there just to sort of tidy up my oversized super fattened line that's gone there just sharpen it up a bit um, now I need to sort of come up with some other glyph type things so A glyph of Idenia before a transformation that would be uh, really hard, but uh, why not try it? Uh, why not try uh, some sort of symbol of her? This bit that's uh, I put in there really is not very pleasing at all. I don't know why I just started to draw that. I thought I'd try and make it sort of blacker on this side. But uh, you know, it's always a case of uh, when you're sketching these things out, just sort of keep going. And since it's quite a significant sort of feature in the uh, adventure itself, why not uh, take some time over it? So now, and in here, I'll do another line down the edge. I'm sticking that up not very well. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's looking pictorially okay. It's representing the ob ob oblex in the middle there. So if I uh, shoot back up to see what the oblex looks like, well, actually, I can just do an overlay of Scarpsy there, and the oblex is in the middle. So it's been transported here from somewhere else, and Idenia, the goddess, is slowly waning and dying in there. Um, so maybe I could have a picture as. Oh, good night, Jack. 1.45 I am. Oh, that's that's late. I wonder where you are, Jack. You're probably like um, Australia, aren't you? Or New Zealand or somewhere like that. But have a good night. So, right, there it is. Well, I've got to really now draw this Idenea uh, image. So if I try and sort of draw the oval head of something, because it's going to be cartoon style, and somehow how would you represent a god? Maybe in sun, sunlight or something. And since it sort of has that feel of something ever so slightly um, goddess style, uh, Egyptian style is what I was looking for. Hello there, so Hunter, thanks very much for signing in. We're in the middle of doing a sketch for a room in this dungeon uh, since you've just arrived in and I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit to see. So this second room here, which uh, is like a worship tomb, it has uh, this structure uh, loaded on it. I suddenly realised really I need to, there's two ways I could tidy this up. If I move it into place now um, on my layer here that I've got, and pick it up. Um, it's kind of about where it's going to be, but what I want it to be doing is really um, uh, somehow getting rid of the stuff underneath it. So I can either do that by filling. So if I fill with uh, white, let me just see how this works out. Get a, a 
snow color there and just fill in these things so you can see it sort of fills in the, um, uh, the behind bits for me uh, which gets rid of all of those lines and things in that room just makes it a little bit more um, now that's what I didn't want to happen undo that That's it. Yeah, just undo those two steps because really what I didn't want to do is lose the um, lose the whole thing. But I am noticing that the center of my first attempt on Idenea has. So if I undo a few times because I can see that I've lost that as well there. So. Okay, so there we have it. Just do that. So, is it about the right size? I think so. In there, um, oh, I can see another area that's not uh, that's showing the underside in there. Right, I'm going to save everything. I just realised how long I've been going without saving. Looks like DCC or MCC. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that's what I'm aiming for. Um, I'm kind of a really bad artist, uh, but thanks for checking in, Hunter. And I'm learning as I go on because it's about the f fifth time I've used my art pad, and I'm still sort of picking it up as I go along. But because I'm trying to do this with Dungeon Crawl Classics, I'm trying to give it. Um, that sort of style where the map has a little bit more imagery on it, um, and less of just, and, and it's kind of also out of scale. So basically, uh, even though I've done that there, it's sort of big and representative of that uh, carved structure. Uh, I'm not too worried about the fact that uh, it doesn't quite look right or sit that perfectly on there. I think we both have a friend in common, Matt from the London RPG community. We probably do. I don't know a Matt. That a Matt doesn't spring out, but we're probably friends maybe on Facebook. Um, I am south of London, though. So, um, back to action. Right, I've got that there. Now, I did say there were some carvings and uh, magic sigils and things on the base of this uh, room. Uh, room two, this memorial room, and so why not try and draw the, like a, a basic dragon, which is going to be tough, so I may have to look up a reference or something before I can do that, but why not? Um, why not? So why don't I look at um, sketching a dragon in there? So now always the best with these things is to sort of try and find someone that's done it before. Um, so I quite often do a kind of quick search on the internet, try and find something relative that looks about right. Um, we used you PC. What's he, what's he saying there? Sorry. We used you PC Maker a few weeks ago. PC Maker. Don't know what PC Maker is. Sorry. Player Character Maker. Oh yes. Oh uh, yeah, that wasn't me doing a player character maker, but um, I may have used one. Skyrim logo is a good one, Samuel. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm going to try and just draw some wings. So I'm going to do a new layer for this, um, even though I'm not 100 percent that this statue thing's right for me yet. But it's it's good enough as a monolith thing in there. So I'll do a new layer, um, and this is where I'll draw the dragon out. So I'm going to zoom in again to get myself into something reasonably close. And I'm going to draw the dragon here and then move it into place afterwards. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, it's going to be pictorial. So, um, again, carved on the floor. So the wings themselves are just going to be the main feature. Oh, I'm on the white colour there. That's not going to help by being on white. Gets the colour back that I want. So, um, starting with the wings, since they are going to be the main thing. 
again, obviously selecting the right colour and layer. Let's go back. No, I'm not getting anything on here. What have I done to my layer? It's made it uh, not drawable. Really am learning as I go here. I've managed to find myself in a position where Oh, that's why I've selected that. There you go. Command D, get rid of that selection. I'm good to go. So zoom back in again. Move up a little bit to find myself a space to draw this pictorial dragon thing. And here we go. So, wing-wise, somehow draw some sort of claw thing out. Could. I could at this point draw something that looks um, and then mirror it, but that's probably not uh, wise in terms of being able to make it exactly the same on each side. I'd rather just rough it out a little bit. So what I feel about this bit at the end is that it should just have curved down a little bit more. Get rid of that. Let's see if I can curve it right down here. Oh well, it's getting there. And um, that was wrong too. Or was it? Oh, that's wrong. The other thing to do here is to give this top line a, a look of something that has some shape and strength, like a curved out bit. One wing of the dragon sort of shaped in a sort of way that I'd like. Um, so I need to move this chat screen over because I'm not able to see this daft uh, Twitter chat screen but let's get it up. So most people forget this there is a ceiling to look for things. Jim liked to have hidden symbols on the ceiling. Yeah that's a good idea. Yeah, I've gone for the floor thing. Quite often players these days, don't they? They don't really spend a lot of time saying, I'm going to um, I'm going to look at things on the floor and the ceiling and, and scout around properly. And you kind of have to think hard to think and, and decide to look at things. It's a tough one as a player, isn't it? Because quite often if I'm doing a dungeon and, I, and I, I get very frustrated as a judge and a GM, I'm looking at it and the players go, all oh, right, um, uh, we'll stroll through this section and maybe check for traps and then you think well you should have looked for the secret door you didn't look for the secret door or you didn't find some other evidence um, but it can go it swings both ways because on the one hand you're thinking well my players aren't checking absolutely everything and on the other hand it's like well how gamey is this going to be are we going to go into every room and every player then spends maximum amount of time checking every inch of the room for any kind of evidence or something. Of course, people don't generally do that unless they're looking for something specifically. Uh, so that could turn a game into something that was a bit sort of a bit formula, isn't it? You know, you all walk into the room and everybody checks every fine detail in, in, in small um, small increments wandering around the room. Uh, but at the same time, you know, good to hide things away sometimes as well. So where am I with this? Let's see. Um, well, I've got to draw a dragon head, haven't I? So I've got absolutely no idea how I'm going to do that successfully, but let's uh, give it the best shot. I think it's going to be sort of curved up um, with, uh, with a sort of a head. It's trying to scale it right as well, but also considering that I'm doing this as a kind of a glyph thing on the floor, it's not too bad a, a call to sort of make it... Um, So if I do sort of an open mouth down there a little bit, if that comes in. Kind of like horns. Here.
It's looking a bit pterodactyl like, but let's let's keep let's work with it. Let's see how I get on. Um, I'll worry about specifics later on. Some sort of like curving back things here. Or maybe I could just sort of put the general curve curve in first. Yeah, the curve in down here. And then somehow there's got to be some sort of fan thing coming off here too, maybe. Uh, around behind there. And then I could do a sort of a chest. I think, it's look, I think it's looking too big for the scale of what I was doing there, but why not just keep going with it? Um, probably... Yeah, it's going, it's going all too big, but why not um, if I select it? I could shrink it all down a bit just to sort of cheat there a little bit. To select the layer. Yeah, because I wanted the wings to be the main feature. That'll do for now. Select it. And uh, attempt to draw the other wing, and then I can bring the whole thing back together afterwards uh, and worry, worry about it there. So the other wing is where I'm going to go badly wrong. Let's have a look. I'm getting far more sketchy with this side and less... Um, Is that uh, an ideal situation on there? But in terms of matching, uh, I need to go in a little bit deeper. Um, in terms of that final bit, that's just wrong. I don't mind that the rest doesn't match too badly, but uh, that edge doesn't quite match up to what I was doing on the other side and neither do these bits but um, if I sketch them in I can then clean them up as I go along. It's just getting that line right from the top there, just so it's similar. And I'll carve a little bit off the edge there to sort of sharpen that up as well. So that's looking reasonable. Uh, I've now got to try and fit that onto the uh, onto the map. <laughs> it's probably gone far too big for what I need. Hold on, it's been a while. Rigor mortis. Um, how have you been? I used to be on Facebook all the 50 mil. I left social media. Oh, rigor. Uh, so you're back. You're not too. Um, maybe you're back from the dead. <laughs> but nice to see you anyway. I'm in the middle of sketching out uh, kind of a, a rough drawing for. Um, 
for this uh, dungeon map here, which is um, appearing, and I need to try and draw some sort of uh, dragon on the on the basis that it's going to sort of fit uh, in here um, for the um, uh, inscriptions on the floor of this uh, on this area, uh, which I'm now attempting. It's not the best of uh, drawings, but um, I'm getting there. So I need to zoom in there, otherwise I'm not going to see what I'm doing. Right, so back to the actual figure then. So really, I could do with a couple of arms coming out over here. Um, let's go back to the drawing and just see how, how terrible a job I can do with these, but let's uh, work it out. So coming in from around here shoulder-wise and just down there. straight out and then maybe the claw abstract or sketchy is the word here legs themselves would be just a little bit further down there. Could also do some of this to sort of indicate the sort of curve of the body over the over the front there. Still want this sort of um, sort of frill is the word. Still playing grunts from time today. Fantastic looking map. Oh, thanks. Well, I didn't draw the actual uh, map. I used a um, an application that generates the map. I'm just adding on some features to it and trying to sort of learn to draw while I'm doing it um, in the style of this Dungeon Crawl Classics um, game, which has that sort of feel where you draw the maps with a slightly pictorial look to it. So realistically here now I'm at a position where I'm going to try and do the legs and do it quick and finish the tail like a curl but it's going to look a bit squat but let's see how I get on anyway. So basically if the legs coming down sort of here-ish, backing off, it's kind of like this rump coming down to the leg and then the foot itself. Here, so that's sort of a knee coming in. I'm off. Thanks, Rigger, for popping in anyway. Another dragon leg coming up, this time dropping off here and coming in, and then the foot. And actually, the tail could curl, the tail could curl around here, probably tighter than that. Right, look at that, I've got the basic shape down now. Um, and now feeling like the wings maybe aren't big enough, but I think it's reasonable. It's trying to represent the sigil of a dragon on the on the um, on the base here rather than it being uh, 
an inscription on the floor rather than there being anything particular. So anything else do I do? A sort of thing coming up here. Like a kind of a fan on the side of the cheeks of the head. That's not looking too good. It's too 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 low against the eyes, I feel. just do with here then is somehow because that's representing that coming in and down there Right, that's it, I've done enough. Although the only thing I really need to do though is to separate out the, the rear and the front of the tail there again. And just remembering that it is uh, quick and dirty attempt. What's that down there? That's nothing. So in this chest area, I need to just do those a little bit better. Just define the front and rear of the chest. So maybe I should go down brush size, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just do the... time over this this time. That's the thing I've taken the most time over of the whole drawing. Some sort of representation of the underbelly of the dragon. Right, that's just about okay for me. That's about my grade at the moment. But um, I'm feeling that there's a weird line in the back there that they could they could look better if it didn't have that like that. Otherwise um, just add some like something to sort of show that it's the front of the leg. Right, picks it up now, shrinks it down, twirls it around, realizes it's far too far too big for the room, but let's have a let's have a look if we uh, uh, oh, that's too small actually. Yep, so over here, bring it up to scale on the room. So we then have a sort of a dragon uh, view on there. The only thing I maybe could do is, well, I could fill it in, couldn't I? Um, just use the bucket and maybe get the white again and just fill it in. Otherwise, it's not going to stand out, is it? Um, with everything sort of underneath it, it's not really uh, standing out that well either against the the number two on there. Not that that's the end of the world, really. But if I just bring it down, that looks quite interesting with a sort of curved tail going into the door and then back out. So yeah. That tells the players that there's a dragon sketch on the floor. 
Um, it looks good enough. It's sketchy. It's my first effort. Um, quite happy with that in terms of this room. Now, if I look back, um, thanks, Samuel. Um, if I look back and just have another look at the actual Raspberry Pi where the view was, so so unusually the Oblix is featured within the what looks like a rolling dune landscape and there's a large structure with stairs leading up to its upper surface which is unlike its current ravine location um, where it stands alone in the dunes so oh it stands alone in the dunes um, then I've said so on the pinned on this memorial stone because it's sort of weirdly magnetic is a shield a stain a chain shirt a short sword a metal scroll case um, so I could probably draw a little shield or something, couldn't I, if I just do another layer um, just on there, just to sort of show that there's a shield. Um, yeah, let's try that anyway. Let's get the pen out um, and just sketch out a shield. I'm still on white. Please. Okay, drawing a circle, first challenge. Badly done, I'm going to undo all of that. And just try and do it, try and be a little bit more careful with it. <laughs> Am I still on white? I know I'm on the eraser. Oh well, it's nearly, nearly the round shape. So maybe it has a bot, an embossing thing in the middle. And then if I sketch around and try and maybe give it some segments or something on there, I shall do really, really badly on this. Because I'm probably trying to do too much with it. Let me get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of it all. because what I could do is just draw a um, draw a circle using the circle app but I'm, I'm going to challenge myself to try and draw something that's vaguely uh, circular and then work on it from there so this look a little, looks a little bit more sketchy than uh, normal so what other features I'm going to do on the shield so maybe just some studying around the uh, central embossed Do some studs in and then really around the edge it will be the same. I might do shrink it down now as well just to make it a little bit um, see I'm a bit fat along the bottom there. shrink it down and that's going to allow me to potentially cheat a little bit because I can squish it in it starts looking less like a disaster piece now I can go back to it with the uh, fat brush you can't see the drawing Oh cool, sorry, thanks for that. Isn't that lucky that I had someone here to tell me that you couldn't see the drawing? Also, you managed to avoid me doing some really bad shields. Um, so, thanks very much for pointing out the error of my ways in that I didn't have the view up. Um, it's quite tough because once you've got this thing right, right in front of you, um, to step away and then realize that the stream I need to press another technical button is quite a challenge but it's what I sort of challenge myself with generally with my stream is to try and uh, you know some of these things you might want to do and not do it live um, but if you were doing that you spend ages in post-production and fiddling about trying to perfect it you know I wouldn't do I wouldn't make any mistakes because I'd be like trying to clean it up and then saving and publishing the video but I like to try and, uh, as much as possible, get the whole thing done quickly. 
and live and then make a few mistakes while I'm at it and learn while I'm doing it as well. So yeah, what I was trying to do, hidden away from everybody, is draw a perfect circle, but it just wasn't happening. But I've got something that at least resembles a, a circle uh, for this shield. So. or something in the middle but given that it's going to shrink down quite a lot I'm quite pleased with it being quite sort of sketchy like that anyway because it's just going to be a feature of something squashed onto the um, uh, the main statue thing down here so probably need to fill it in again Center's not, uh, that's a bit annoying with the center of it as well. That's good enough for me. I'll do. Most that I say was uh, glued on there. Yeah, it's convincing enough to be a shield, isn't it? And uh, it's quite sort of sketchy looking. Yeah, so, you know, it's coming along. Um, the whole thing's sort of coming along if I zoom out. And my lily pad's there for the spiked lily in the in the room one. And my um, weird monolith, which is magnetic with um, magical signals. The only other thing I could do is do more uh, magical symbols on the floor, but... Um, I think I've probably done enough for that. Uh, room three, uh, room six up here has like an animating carpet uh, on it. Let's just have a skip out to have a quick look at that and remind myself what's on there. So room six, let's have a look. Going further down. Myra Meagle. So she's been stuck in this other room uh, on here. Uh, so basically, open the door of his bright room with the black shiny tiles from her floor to ceiling. In the center of the room is a cowed figure wearing a simple black robe. Uh, uh, they're cross-legged and staring into a small pool. The water looks crystal clear and the room is lit by torchlight. The north to the north is one visible exit for a door that looks to be made of bone. And then I've said this room is room is under a magical and unchanging stasis and in the centre is a small memorial water pool. Sitting cross legged beside the pool is a black cloak. This is Myra Meagles who's been placed here over a century ago and has been locked in stasis without the need for sustenance. The entire room is encased in black tiles made of the oblique obsidian which gleam as if polished. Um, so Myra is the leader of a cult called the Forgotten Eye, the worshipped idea near the goddess but when, uh, when she first arrived in the realm she fell out of favour and was thrown into stasis in this room. Uh, the bone door is built from various human and animal bones and it's not locked but trapped. So that's Myra Meagle. She's like a cleric. She has a cudgel but she also has the harm spell. I can't believe I gave a plus 10 on the harm spell. I wonder if I was a mistake. Oh, that's very good if it is. Uh, so Myra has been locked in stasis in this chamber of nearly hundreds and the cult of the forgotten eye has been forgotten. <laughs> she's, new, she's originally an acolyte, uh, acolyte of Idenair before leading the cult. So that's okay, I just want to remind myself about that. The, um, worship room. Okay, so what's before? Where's the room with the carpet? I feel like I'm missing my um, a whole section on a, on a carpet that I had in here. Let's scoot down. Worship room. Like this avatar. 
Oh, there's the antechamber. Okay, so this room contains a lot of rotten, sodden furnishings and carpets and rugs. Opposite the entrance to the west is a double door that is ornate and slightly ajar, with both doors open into the room, revealing a visible crack down the centre to a dark room below. The large, faded red carpet on the floor here is soaked with water and rotten, much like the rest of the furnishings. So I've said there's a poison needle trap on the open door, uh, but the rugs themselves are a construct with a carpet slab. But because it's Dungeon Crawl Classics, you get up to uh, as many attacks as you put as action dice. So it's got 6d20, which means it makes six attacks, because uh, the whole floor kind of rips up and starts uh, slapping and whacking at the players um, in there. It doesn't have many hit points, but for a couple of rounds, it's going to be uh, hitting quite hard with this uh, 6d20, uh, so six attacks on its activation. So that was the only other thing on that room there. I thought I'd maybe try and do a carpet just uh, now just to represent that in there. So I don't really know how I'm going to draw a carpet other than just sort of sketch out something as, as close as I can. This time I shall get rid of the um, this. So this room here is actually room six is where the carpet is um, and is the antechamber to this larger uh, sort of worship room with a statue in there. So I need to sort of represent somehow in there that there's carpet. Um, so I'm going to just do probably the classic sort of magic carpet looking carpet that will sort of do the trick I think. Um, so let's go in and have a go at that just quickly and be probably the last thing I, I do. Um, so just to sort of knowing where I am with this I like to do a new layer first of all so a new layer and then I can sort of sketch out this carpet thing if I get back to there. So um, again, I don't really mind that it looks going to look a little bit um, uh, a little bit uneven sort of thing in there. Generally, it's sodden um, as well. So I could do like lots of tiny things, and this will shrink down a little bit. And then some kind of patterning on there as well. Actually, the other thing is, is it, it, there's a kind of a map in the middle of this. Now I forget, I forgot that. Now that's interesting. Um, so I really should be looking at carpet references for pattern style, shouldn't I? But um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. But it has got a map in the middle. So again, I'll just go with a circular motif for that. Look at that, it's not too bad a circle for me. Um, and somehow I need to sort of represent a map, so maybe again it's sort of showing the it's showing the sort of obliques in the center of the map and surrounding sort of mountainside, but it's sketched into the carpet, so barrow mounds here. River falls coming in the back there. A tower here. Yeah, so there was uh, when I did this on the dungeon alphabet, this room came up with um, uh, a sense of vertigo as you came into the room, and then someone was listening in very kindly said, Why don't you? Uh, suggests that they kind of look down and see a map on the carpet below and that was the kind of idea that it was a map of the region so in a sense in the other room they've seen what the obliques looked like before in this room they've seen the sort of obliques now um, where it's sort of structured in the middle of the uh, ravine because it's been moved there magically from its existing realm so back to, back to the drawing and I'll just sort of sketch it out I think I'll just fatten this up now, to, um, which will make it look a little bit more sketchy, but uh, it will uh, it will fit neatly in that room when I move it up uh, and replace the floor with it. I just realised actually that um, I'll probably end up covering up the six with it, which isn't great. Uh, I might have to think about that uh, by layering a six somewhere else in the room or beside the room.
So I don't know what other patterns to put on here other than I could sort of do something from the edge like a, a curl. some of these lines up a little bit too. I wonder about putting some tearing in the in the in the carpet at all to sort of look a little bit like it's uh, sodden with water and uh, becoming a little bit ragged despite the fact it's like an animated carpet that's going to cause some grief for the characters in here when they uh, walk across its floor. Yeah, so last week I was doing this, I had all sorts of problems with this tablet. It's called an XP Pen uh, tablet, and um, the driver went. But what I was doing to help myself, I had a separate screen up showing me the um, uh, showing me the the chat as it was going on, and that's a little bit of a challenge because the extra monitor didn't uh, agree with the uh, tablet. Which these tablets work by becoming another screen on your computer, so. Uh, because it was becoming another screen, it was kind of clashing with my other monitor. So the only thing is, do I do I do anything with these ends to make them look a little bit more together? I think I will. Sketching in there, uh, just blacking it out a little bit along the what are these called on a carpet? Tassels. That's the word. That's the first time I've used the word tassels on the internet. Actually, you could sort of pre-load the characters with a sense of fear by saying something like the tassels are all, um, are all sewn with claws, with creatures' claws, or something like that. That would be like, well, hang on a minute, this carpet's maybe um, somewhat dangerous in terms of like giving them a little sense of fear. I mean, that's always a good thing on a with with a writing an adventure is to do two things. I think they call it foreshadowing, don't they? Where you sort of hint at things to come, but it's also good sometimes to like even if this wasn't an animated carpet to add something that makes them think, oh dear, this uh, this rug um, is is somehow dangerous or has some sort of meaning to it if it's sewn up with um, uh, dangerous looking claws in the tassels. So right, so that that's what's on the base of this room, and the problem I've got here with this is that now if I start to fill it in, I'm going to lose the six. Um, uh, but at least, oops, wrong colour. But at least that's um, not too bad. That no, puts the six right in in there, I and mean, if I fill that, I'm going to lose the six. Quite like having a six in the middle of that room. Maybe even that integrated a bit with the carpet, or maybe I could move the carpet down a little bit if I undo that. Um, yeah, it's a shame it sort of loses where the idea of this sketch is centrally placed, but why not leave it there? I'll make it a little bit bigger to fit the space fully. And uh, there we go, sort of large carpet rug thing, centrally placed. Um, so there we have it. I mean, at the moment, it's looking okay. Um, so anything I'd like to do probably is sort of dump it into the uh, the book. But I'll, I could save it out and do that. I could save it out and do that, couldn't I? So now if I export it as a ping file, and I'll call it Barrow, map into my creative folder, 
So if I switch over to this, and then I'll just show you, I'll dump it into the actual book itself. I say book, I mean my Google Doc representing the adventure by loading it up. So. This is the antechamber. Let's have a look if I can just fire up where that map is at the moment. You will see this visible in just a second. I'm just actually using a different computer to uh, load the image in. So upload from computer. It's going to appear any moment now. It says the image is too large. I'm going to have to shrink it down. That's no good. Oh, well, I'll work on that later, and I'll I'll bring that in next week so that I can get the my version of the uh, of the map overlaid in there. I do still want to work on this. I've got a couple of other features I'll put in a couple of the rooms there, um, but nothing too detailed. I don't want to spend hours doing it. Although you know, and it's just learning the process too. Um, but the current map is the one that was the raw map. We'll go up a little bit further. And I've just deleted it, I think. Never mind. Oh, well, let's go back to see the, uh, the, the tablet view and just show you what I've done as a kind of review at the end of it. So yeah, a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to remove these bits of text because these were automatically generated. This uh, ironbound gate, broken sarcophagus, um, and the fresco rule down there that drives a person mad. Although um, in room two there are some frescoes and, and designs in there. That's it's looking okay to me. You know, I'd love to be able to draw larger sketches on the side of this with creatures and things on there to sort of represent a more colourful Dungeon Crawl classic style map, but uh, this isn't doing too bad, just loading in the images as I go and doing kind of rough sketches. So thanks, thanks Samuel for your feedback and helping me out when I realised I was drawing a circle and no one could see that shield as I was doing it, but um, yeah, it's not, it's not looking too bad, it's getting there slowly, and um, yeah, I'll end the stream and say thanks very much for listening in to everyone and um, have a good week see you i'm back again next saturday hopefully same time which is 11 a.m um, us eastern time 4 p.m uk time and all the other random times for people that come from around the world to, uh, come and uh, come and have a look cheers thanks bye